Welcome to My Summer Practice Journal, week number six. This week, we're all back to normal and I have a lot more time to practice. So I wanna try and get my double tongue to 120 BPM while really focusing on endurance. I will also be moving on to liqueur number 21, which is in 916 with the full tempo marking of quarter note equals 96. So I'm gonna be shooting for quarter note equals 72. For this week's military band excerpt, I'm gonna be looking at a Stravinsky excerpt from the Firebird, and I'm gonna be shooting for a final tempo of around 120. And then finally, we're gonna be moving away from Tableau, and I'm gonna start looking at Joe Love's Liberation. And the goal for this week is to just get all the notes learned on the page at whatever tempo I feel comfortable. Let's get right into this week. I hope you enjoy. So I started off today by continuing the break-in process on some of these, the Dario 3.5s that I have. These still don't feel exactly how I want them to, but the uh, flexibility, especially in the low range, is significantly better than the Legere that I've been playing. I just really don't like the extraneous noise that you can kind of hear in the sound. This week, I set my focus to working on scales a lot more than I have been. I know scales should be a staple in your practice every single day, but it's definitely lacked um, in my practice so far this summer. So I definitely wanna hit scales because my technique has felt a little bit shaky. I also find that when I work on scales, I'm mainly slurring them, which can be a whole nother story when you're tonguing them in terms of evenness with the metronome. Because of this, you'll see that I'm tonguing a lot of my scales just to work on evenness and alignment with the tongue. These are called scale rainbows, and the first key I did them in was C, and then the next key I did was D major. I know we're already on to week number six and I shouldn't be having any more audio technical difficulties, but I think I just forgot to turn on the on switch for my zoom recorder. I just worked on some double tonguing with consistency on the same pitch and working on endurance. I then went on to work through the Firebird excerpt by Stravinsky and the first measure is definitely the hardest part especially at these slower tempos. It goes up to a altissimo G and then G sharp and then jumps back down to E. I decided to go with the front fingering E, but I think you could also just use normal palm keys for E. I then went on to work through liqueur number 20, just the first page, and it's in 916, so I did a lot of non-metronome work, just because in the last few weeks I've been having some consistency issues towards the end of the week when I take the metronome out. As per usual, this liqueur etude had a lot of sequences and patterns throughout, and so it's really important to quickly identify these so that the rest of it's easy. Especially in an etude like this where it's in 916 and the beaming is not always 3-3-3, three, three, and three, it's important for the accents and articulations to insinuate those beaming patterns in each measure. I know it can be boring to start with long tones every single day, but this is important just to sort of get that sound concept in your head that you want, and then it also just warms up those embouchure muscles so that you're ready to practice for long periods of time. Here I was working through some single tonguing today. I think this is a etude for clarinet. I think it's called the Longinus. 
I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I think that's correct. I like to play this in many different keys and then also switch the articulation from da 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 to da da da. You can do it on the way up and the way down. You can also just do straight 16s. At the beginning of the summer, my single tonguing was definitely not that strong just because it wasn't something that I was consistently working on. But if there's anything that you can do is work on articulation consistently, especially if you're bad at it. I find myself not to be very strong when it comes to articulation. So it's something that I really have to put the work in and be consistent with. So if I work on it every day, it starts to get easier and my max tempo goes up and up. Another thing I struggle a lot in terms of saxophone playing is my pitch in the palm keys, and I think it's something that we all sort of struggle with. Um, I used to leave off uh, C1 or C2 depending on what note I'm playing, and that brings down the pitch a little bit, but um, it's important to work with the drone, especially in those, those higher palm keys, just to work on making that voicing uh, muscle memory. I like to just set a drone to whatever my goal pitch is. So in this case, I was setting it to concert A flat, so my F, and then I would just slowly work up to it um, and then work my way around that note and just work on setting my voicing there every single time. As you can hear, I still have some uh, inconsistencies when it comes to my back syllable. I like to use the syllables T key just because that's more front of my mouth and I find more success with that. A lot of people like D gi, which is more back of the throat in terms of the, the gi syllable, but the back syllable is definitely something that I want to continue to work on. Like I said, I wanted to work on scales a lot this week, so the way I'm going to start doing it is picking a key, so today I started with C, and then I'll go through the keys chromatically each day, so tomorrow will be C sharp. I'm going to plan on starting with the C major scale, and then I'll go on to the C harmonic minor scale, the C melodic minor scale, the C major thirds. C harmonic minor thirds, and then C major fourths, and then C harmonic minor fourths. I'm also going to try and incorporate articulation into these scales, so I usually started off with my baseline tempo of 60, and I will do a fully slurred scale, an articulation pattern of my choice, which in this case it was tongue 2 slur 2, and then I would go on to doing it all tongued, and then bump up the tempo 10 or 15 clicks each time to a different tempo depending on the scale. C major really isn't too hard and uh, even the harmonic minor scale is pretty familiar to me so I didn't really have a hard time with these thirds. I've been going to the gym quite a lot recently, and I find that the saxophone is quite similar to how you'd work out in the gym. 
it's all about reps and consistency and then maxing out your tempos just like you would with weight. As you can hear, the altissimo stuff wasn't very accurate or consistent, so this is something that I was really trying to work on, the connection between the palm keys to the altissimo register, the G, and especially G sharp going back down to the E. I tried to do a lot of altered rhythms just to work on those connections. I then went on to work through Lacour 21, page number 2. Even though I didn't get around to recording any of the Joel Love Liberation, I worked through um, some of the first page and second page sections. I'm working at a really slow tempo right now, so it's not that fun, but I have a feeling that once I bump up the tempo a little bit, I'm going to really enjoy this piece. I know I say it a lot, but it's really important to start your day off with some mouthpiece exercises. The mouthpiece exercises not only get your voicing locked in for when you put your whole saxophone together, but it just gets your face set in general. Today I moved on to the key of C-sharp, starting with the major scale full range, and with varying articulation patterns, slurred and not slurred. I was quite impressed with my max tempo of 120 for the fully tongued scale, just because fully tonguing that full range scale takes a lot of endurance, and it's something I've not been very good at in the past. I then went on to the melodic minor scale, which at UT were only required to do the two octaves or one octave for G, G sharp, and A. This scale in thirds is definitely one of my least favorites just because there's a lot of flipping in the right and the left hands. Fourths are definitely not my strong suit, but I have learned them all in the past, and so it's a lot of muscle memory just to get them back. I ended up failing and sort of giving up on the C-sharp harmonic minor fourths, but we'll try it again another day. As you can hear, I think today I got the tempo up to about 66 BPM, and I'm just trying to continue to work without the metronome just to prepare myself for when I perform it on Sunday. Finally, some Joel Love liberation for your ears. 
there's a lot of sequences and patterns in this as well and so it's important to watch for the uh, accidentals that carry through the measure there's a lot of those grace notes where the accidental starts and then it carries through to a, a large normal note in the end of the measure This section's a lot of fun just because of the placement of the accents is different on each beat, and it's going to be very important for me to follow through with making sure that those accents are in the right place at the right time. I went on to work through the key of D for my major and harmonic minor and melodic minor scales in all of the different variations. I also opted for the tongue one slur two tongue one articulation pattern. I think that's what it would be called. Tongue slur tongue tongue is what it would be. And this was deceivingly hard once I got up to the faster tempos. I found that I could not go as fast with that articulation pattern as I could with the tongue two, slur two, or the slur two, tongue two articulation patterns that I did on the previous two days. When working on these scales, it's also really important to be thinking about your hand position. Um, hand position was something I struggled a lot with in high school, but then during COVID, I really cracked down on it and it got a lot better once you start to think about it. It's all a mental game with uh, hand position and just looking in the mirror every once in a while, seeing where those flyaways are. I decided to really test the limits for my scale in thirds and scale in fourths tempo here. I was actually really impressed and I think this is the fastest I've ever had to move my fingers. I think today I finally took the tempo up to around 70, with my goal tempo being around 72. It's funny, I've been noticing that in these videos my hair looks a lot better on camera than it does when I look in the mirror. I don't know why, but I've been like, oh, maybe I need a haircut recently, but when I look at the, the video, it looks fine, so maybe not.
Today I continued to work on the double tonguing and I started off at around 100 BPM and then uh, I worked it up to around 120, which was my goal tempo for the week. And then I think here is 120. I tried to do it on different pitches just so I could show that I could do it at different uh, resistance levels since different pitches are harder to double tongue on is what I'm finding. I'm not too happy with how this excerpt went at the end of the week. It was a little bit sloppy, but, but it was sort of the best I could do with the time that I put into it. This articulation pattern, it ended up being way harder than I expected at this tempo, and I had some consistency issues. I ended up recording this etude at around 70 BPM instead of my goal tempo of around 72, which we were close, but as usual, I had some consistency issues with just feeling comfortable going through the whole thing in one string. Only spending a week on it is hard just because I still feel like I'm sight reading just a little bit. Just because it's not like, oh, let me work on this one hard section um, and rep it a lot with uh, slower tempos. The whole thing is pretty hard, so the whole thing has to be uh, played quite a lot. And then to end off the week, here's me working through the end of uh, Liberation by Joel Love. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. So that's week number six done. Just to make this quick, we pretty much met all of our goals. Double tonguing went well. The Firebird excerpt was all right. For etude number 21, I had a little bit of consistency issues just because I'm not able to spend longer on a week with it. And these are getting pretty tricky towards the end of the book. And then with Liberation, I know I didn't film a lot this week of learning that. Um, but I was pretty much just piecing each section together, just learning the notes. I will definitely be continuing work on that next week, so I will see you guys tomorrow to begin work on My Summer Practice Journal week number seven.